we have so far learnt about combination and decomposition reaction. Now let's learn about another type of reaction. You must have played Kho Kho game. What happens in that? The chaser pats the back of another player of her team and says Kho and takes her place. And then that player chases other team member. Sometimes some metals also take place of other metals. Let's see this through a reaction. Here I have two iron nails. One I will keep for comparison and the other one I have tied with a thread. And this I am going to place in copper sulphate solution which I already have prepared like this. And this is also copper sulphate solution which I have kept aside for comparison. Now let's see what happens after 20 minutes. Well, look at the color change of the solution and compare it. The copper sulphate solution which was blue due to presence of copper ions. Now the color has faded and where has the copper gone? Now I am going to take out the iron nail. Are you ready to note down your observations? Okay, so here we go and look, this is the iron nail which we have now and in this iron nail, let's compare it with the iron nail which we had kept for comparison, see the difference and now if I rub the surface of this nail, what do you see? All the copper from the copper sulphate solution has come and stuck to the surface of the iron nail. So, can you tell me which metal from copper sulphate solution has displaced the other metal? I am sure you can guess. And one thing more children, you can always have alternative resources to do this reaction. Don't worry if you don't have boiling tube. Instead of boiling tube, you can even use a glass bottle or you can use a plastic bottle cut into half but never stop learning and learning by doing specially. Now after we have compared the intensity of the blue color of copper sulphate solution in test tube, you must be wondering how to write it down in the form of chemical reaction. Chemical reaction can be written as shown in the screen. Fe was the iron metal which was dipped in copper sulphate solution. So we have written Fe in brackets S plus copper sulphate. Within brackets we have written aqueous because the solution of copper sulphate was made in water. And what does it give us? Ferrous sulphate aqueous solution plus Cu that is the metal. So in this reaction iron has displaced or removed another element copper from copper sulphate solution. This reaction is known as displacement reaction and my dear discoverers, can you tell me what would happen if we would have kept the iron nail in copper sulphate solution for longer hour? Well, do it, try and conclude. Now I have another interesting task for you. Put on your thinking caps and tell me what would happen if instead of this copper sulphate solution, you take copper chloride solution and add lead metal in it. Will lead metal displace copper from copper chloride solution? Well, I am sure you will be able to give the answer. Explore a little, perform it yourself because learning by doing is what is necessary because this is the way you will become lifelong learners. We just saw how a metal displaces metal ion from its aqueous solution. What if reaction takes place between two aqueous solutions? I'm sure you all are curious to know. Okay, we are little scientists and we believe in learning by doing. So let's perform an activity. Here I have taken two solutions of one is of barium chloride. 
the other is sodium sulfate and note the color see they both look transparent and now what will happen when i mix the two solutions observe carefully and now let's mix the two solutions what do you observe wow what a magical world of science this is this insoluble white substance is called a precipitate any reaction that produces a precipitate can be called a precipitation reaction formation of barium sulfate and sodium chloride has taken place here you can see it on the screen the chemical reaction has been depicted in the form of chemical equation now what causes formation of white ppt the white precipitate of barium sulfate is formed by the reaction of sulfate ions and barium ions the other product formed is sodium chloride which remains in the solution such reactions in which there is exchange of ions between the reactants are called double displacement reactions now it's time for a task recall the activity where we mix solutions of lead nitrate and potassium iodide what was the color of the precipitate formed can you name the compound precipitated and also write the balanced chemical equation for that reaction was that a double displacement reaction all what you have done here you may also refer to the qr codes given in your textbook or various links of various videos and also remember if you perform certain activities in group with your team with your peers you will enjoy it more here i have a very interesting group activity put approximately 25 ml of water in three beakers which you have named say a b and c and copper sulfate solution in the fourth beaker you may measure and record the temperature of each liquid contained in the beakers and now add approximately two spatulas of potassium sulfate ammonium nitrate and hydrous copper sulfate and fine iron fillings to beakers a b c or d or which you have named on the basis of your friends and stir them finally measure and record the temperature of each of the mixtures which you have prepared in the beakers find out which reactions are exothermic and which are endothermic in nature you must have observed that iron articles are shiny when new but get coated with a reddish brown powder when left for some time this process i'm sure you know that commonly is known as rusting of iron and i'm sure you can recall the reaction of rusting of iron you learnt in your previous classes what was it it was reaction of iron with oxygen present in the air along with moisture you may also draw a scene like this where you may depict some articles or substances drawn where oxidation is taking place i'm sure you will enjoy drawing with color or you may even shade it with pencil some other metals also get tarnished in this manner can you recall have you noticed the color of the coating formed on copper and silver if they are left in air for some time yes you will enjoy exploring and finding out the answers to these questions can you suggest ways for protection of metal surfaces from reaction with moisture explore ways you may go to your library or search through internet be a discoverer like i told you before also and yes be observant as you learn from your surroundings okay now i have a little task do some intelligent guessing can you tell me what will happen if you heat copper powder in china dish well i am sure you must have guessed it right oxygen from air starts reacting with copper and what will you observe hmm the surface of copper powder will turn black this is because oxygen gets added to copper and copper oxide is formed 
and you can very easily represent this chemical reaction. See on your screen, copper and oxygen on heating are giving copper oxide. Now, if hydrogen gas is passed over this heated material that is copper oxide, what will happen to the black coating? Does the surface turn brown? Well, yes, the reverse reaction takes place and copper is obtained back. You can see it on the screen. So, if a substance gains oxygen during a reaction, it is said to be oxidized. And if a substance loses oxygen during a reaction, it is said to be reduced. Now, what happened during this reaction? Copper oxide is losing oxygen and is being reduced. And hydrogen is gaining oxygen and is being oxidized. So, in other words, if we try to explain, one reactant gets oxidized while the other gets reduced during a reaction. And such reactions are called oxidation reduction reactions or in short, redox reactions. There are many examples and redox reactions are happening all around us. On the screen, you can see zinc oxide it's reacting with carbon and is giving zinc and carbon monoxide. Now, what is happening in this reaction? In this, carbon is oxidized to carbon monoxide and zinc oxide is reduced to zinc. And look at another reaction where we have manganese oxide reacting with acid. Which acid is it on the screen? Yes, it's hydrochloric acid. So, when manganese oxide reacts with hydrochloric acid, we are getting three products. We are getting manganese chloride, water and chlorine gas. Now, can you find out whether in this reaction, which substance has got oxidized and which has got reduced? Now, that is a little task for you. So, you may note down the reactions nicely in your notebook and observe where oxygen is getting added and where oxygen is being taken away. Now, from these examples, you can easily say that if a substance gains oxygen or loses hydrogen during a reaction, that becomes oxidized. And if a substance loses oxygen or gains hydrogen, then it is reduced. I am sure now you look around your surrounding and find out what are the effects of oxidation reactions in everyday life. And so many metals around you in the country, you may be seeing getting corroded. Think of ways how you can protect them. I'm sure you will find out and you've already learnt also. So just collate your data and I'm sure now you will stop wondering why your iron gate keeps getting painted after season after season. Now children, here I have a packet of chips which I bought around 10 days ago. Sometimes you must have felt that the smell when you open it after a long long time if it has been kept, the smell changes. Have you ever tasted or smelled the fat or oil containing food materials which have been left for a long time? Yes. When fats and oils are oxidized, they become rancid. Rancid means their smell and taste change. Usually, substances which prevent oxidation, they are called antioxidants. So, they are added to foods containing fats and oil. And that is why we keep food in airtight containers, which helps to slow down oxidation. Do you know that the chips packet you buy, which gas is it filled up of? And why do the manufacturers flush bags of chips with gas? And which gas could it be? So, nitrogen helps prevent the chips from getting rancid. Well, children, so it's time to recall and revise what we have learnt in the chapter 
chemical reactions and equations. We have learned various reactions. You have performed so many reactions and that is what learning by doing is. Some you learnt with experimentation, some you learnt with observation and some videos also you watched and I'm sure you noted down all the observations and you collected data, you inferred from your data that which kind of reaction was taking place. So, you learn to differentiate between different types of reaction. You also learn to define what kinds of reactions were taking place. And you learnt about the endothermic and exothermic processes along with it. So, what were the reactions we've learnt? If we quickly do a recap, we did combination reactions, we did decomposition reactions, we did displacement reaction and double displacement reaction and also oxidation and reduction reactions. And well, you were also motivated to do certain group activities because with your peers you enjoy more and yes, bonding becomes strong and once the bonding between the peers is strong, the learning becomes stronger. Whenever you are doing learning, either by doing it yourself or by watching experiment or by exploring through internet, remember that you have to take care of environment. Never do any activity which will harm the environment. You must always remember to keep your surroundings also clean. Happy learning!